In the last video, we were exploring Booleans, Boolean values, true or false values, in greater detail, and specifically, we learned that, well, we learned that true and false are themselves keywords in Java, and that they have Boolean values. And so, for example, to bring up Dr. Java for a moment, that means that we can write expressions like, well, we can say if false robot.move, and we discovered when we did that that the robot doesn't move because false isn't true. So Java will evaluate this expression, and if it's true, the robot will move. So here the it's not true, so the robot doesn't move. But we could write if not false robot move, else do nothing, and in which case, because false is not true, or sorry, because not false is true, let's put it that way, because not false is true, and because therefore this condition evaluates to true, the robot should move, and there it moved. And so we can see, we can say not true, and it's false, and not not false. See, that should be false also, right? Okay. False, not false is true, not not false, therefore is false again. Anyway, okay, back to, uh, back to the board. Back to the drawing board. We, uh, we also learned, most importantly, well, actually, we learned that when we declare a method, that we actually declare the type that the method should return, and that if we declare the return type as void, which is what we've been doing without realizing it, that means that our method does not return a value, in which case we call that method as a statement only for its side effect, like for the fact that the robot will move as a result of calling it. On the other hand, we can define a method to return a boolean value, in which case we literally write the word boolean there instead of void, and so we wrote this method called front is blocked, which I believe I still have defined, so we can ask uh, I believe I define it in my swap file, and that's what we're looking at up here. Front is blocked, so I've defined my own my own boolean test, and right now it says false because the front is not blocked, and we could put that in an if. We could say if the front is not blocked, right? If not front is blocked, then uh, maybe turn left, and uh, I'm going to leave off the else because I don't want to do anything otherwise. And there we go, the front was not blocked, so we turned left. So we can define our own conditions, which is pretty snazzy. Although we have to remember, we are still calling a method, so we need to say what file we're calling that method in. Uh, here's something I should never do, by the way. Maybe I should show you this. If I write as a line of code in my program, front is blocked, semicolon, then I've done something wrong. Because that front is blocked is not a statement I call for its side effect. It doesn't have any side effects. It simply answers true or false. What I call this method because I want to know an answer, the true or false that I get back. So if I call it like a statement, hoping it will have some sort of side effect, like changing where the robot is, well, nothing's going to happen and I'll be disappointed. So that's the same reason that in the middle of my program I wouldn't write robot.ondark semicolon like this. I could do that, and it will compile. There, it, it just compiled, that's good. But it doesn't actually accomplish anything because it asks if the robot's on dark, and then it basically plugs up its ears and says, da, 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 I don't want to hear, not listening, I don't care what the answer is. So we should never be calling a method whose only purpose is to give us an answer if we're not actually listening to the answer. So let's make sure we don't do that. Let's take a closer look at what we did do. We said, if the front is clear, return false, and otherwise return true. And so now we know we can use a return statement, and that when we do use a return statement, which is our third kind of statement, along with method calls and ifs, that when we use a return, we write a Boolean expression such as true or false, but it could be something more involved, like robot.onDark. And so I want to take a look at that right now. So first observation, I could negate this condition, right? I could say a not over here. And if I negate this, but I want to not, but I want to make sure I don't change the behavior of this method, if I negate this, if I put a not here, what else would I have to change? I would have to swap the, t the two conditions, right? Because if I negate this, that means, well, it's going to do the opposite of what it did. So if I also do the opposite by swapping the conditions, or swapping the uh, consequences, we'll say. Um, I believe technically you call this part the consequence and this the alternative, and I swap the two of them, but I don't think the vocabulary is all that useful. So now it says, if the front is not clear, return true. And that's the same idea, right? The front is blocked when the front is not clear. If the front is not not clear, then it is clear, so return false because it's not blocked. I don't actually think the way I just put that is helpful at all. But hopefully you can see this this method as I've defined it now is going to do exactly what it used to do. Now, what I want to show you 
is something very clever here, or very subtle maybe, but I think important to understanding how Booleans work and what they're for. So this says, if not robot front is clear. That's an expression, right? Suppose, let's, uh, let's introduce a robot into the world so we have something to look at. Suppose oh, oh, one of these things loads a robot. Oh man, we typed a lot of things since we loaded our world. There we go. See the lengths we'll go to so I don't have to type a little bit. Okay. Now, sorry, just adjusting my monitor. You can't see that. Anyway, now it says, uh, well, right now the robot's front is clear. So if I look at this code, it says robot front is clear. Well, that's true. Not true is false. And because it's false, we'll return false. So when this expression here evaluates to false, we return false. On the other hand, if we turn the robot around so that now its front is no longer clear because it's facing the edge of the screen, and we ask, is the robot's front clear? Now it says false, and not false is true, so we return true. So the value of this expression is now true, and we return true. When the value of this expression was false, we return false. In other words, we're returning the value of this expression. Whatever the value of this expression is, that's the answer we want. So another way I can write this entire method, and one that I think is a lot nicer, and that it's worth challenging ourselves to see solutions like that, is to simply write return that expression, not robot front is clear. So that expression I just wrote does exactly the same thing as the uh, the code we wrote earlier that said, uh, let's bring that up for a moment. Oop, scrolled off the screen. There we go. This, if front is clear, return false, and otherwise return true, as our definition of front is blocked, is exactly the same as saying, just return the opposite of front is clear. If front is clear is true, return false. When front is clear is false, return true. And that's exactly what this code says. And if we go ahead and compile it and run it, it's going to do exactly the same thing. And I think uh, I'm just, I'm just going to make you trust me on that point. So trust me, that's exactly what the, oh, but of course, don't blindly trust me. You want to make sure you understand where this is coming from. So the return statement is going to evaluate this Boolean expression, which means evaluating this thing, then negating it, and then returning that negated value. All right, with all of that in mind, I want to look at some more uh, advanced conditions we can test. So let's try left is dark. Maybe that's, is that too fancy? No, let's give that a try. Left is dark. No, you know what? I'm deliberately going to put that off. We'll write that one soon enough. So what did we do? We did front is blocked. I want to do... Oh, forget it. Left is dark. I like left is dark. We're doing it. It's I'm deliberately doing left is dark in part because it's going to be useful when we want to test if the square to the robot's left is dark. So how do we figure out if the square to the left is dark? Well, we can turn to the left. Let's turn this robot around so we can think about it more easily. We could, if we want to know if this square is dark, we could turn left, move on to that cell, and test if it's dark. Uh, another way we could do that to save ourselves a little bit of trouble is we could use that slide left method we defined earlier, which turns left, moves, and then turns back to the right, so it leaves the robot in its original orientation. So I'm going to use that slide left, because I really like it. Slide left, and that's a method in this file, and my file is called swap. So file name is swap. Slide to the left, and then test if you're on dark. Let's see, if you are on dark, well then the left was dark, so we'll return true. And otherwise, we'll return false. And actually you may have noticed, hopefully you've noticed since we just did one of these, but I understand it takes a while before you start seeing these things. Since when on dark is true, I return true, and when on dark is false, I return false, I could actually simply replace that if with return robot on dark. And there's excuse me, there's something nice about that. Slide left and return the result of on dark. But I'm going to leave it in the if form because maybe it's easier to see and also because it's going to turn out we're going to change this code very soon. So compile. It's it's happy now. We'll load my little world here. There we go. And we'll try uh, swap dot... Oh, I should point out something. When you call... Let's look at on dark, for example. When I call robot on dark, 
And this is really only a Dr. Java thing. So if you're not using Dr. Java, you, you really don't care about this. And if you're using Dr. Java, but you're ignoring this interactions pane that I like, then you don't need to know this. But just in case you're curious because you like the Dr. Java interactions pane or you want to know that I'm not fooling you with something, if I write this like a statement with a semicolon at the end, Java will determine whether or not the robot is on dark, get the answer, and not tell me what it was. It's as if I plugged my ears and didn't listen to it. If I write it without the semicolon, well now that's something that I can't normally write on a line by itself in my program. If I do, it will tell me a semicolon was expected, I believe. But I can write it in the interactions pane, and now it treats it as an expression and tells me the answer. So when I call left is dark, let's see, left is dark is in the swap file, so I need to say swap.left is dark. When I call left is dark, I'm writing it without the semicolon so, so that Dr. Java will print out the answer. So is the left dark? What should it do? It should return false, right? What do you notice? You probably noticed that, yes, it returned false, which is good. Yay, yay, false. But the robot moved. And that's surprising. It's It seems like when we ask someone, is the left dark, it would be surprising if, by the time they've answered, they're in a different place than where they started. And so, because um, because we're calling this for the reasons that we are, we're going to say that uh, one of the conditions is that afterwards, there's been no side effect. Nothing has changed. A nice thing, when you define these Boolean methods, f for the first part of, for the first many videos that we're going to look at, the uh, we want to make sure that if we're calling a method for an answer, that method is not also going to have a side effect. We'll eventually see methods where we want to have a side effect and we want an answer, but it's going to be a while till we, till we get to that point. So for now, we would like to not return any values, to have no side effects in our methods if that method is returning a value. And since my method's returning a Boolean value, I'm going to make sure I have no side effect. So right now, I have not yet met this, this condition. I, I do have a side effect. My robot ends up in a different place. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how to modify this method so that the robot has not, um, so that we don't have a side effect, the robot has not moved. I'll see you in the next video.